So hi there again, it's David Williams and today I'm going to talk about amplifiers a little bit more and go into some non-idealities of amplifiers or at least a couple of non-idealities of amplifiers. There's, there's quite a few but I'm going to focus on, on two of them and these two are, are characteristics of amplifiers that make them behave not quite as I've shown in the previous tutorial on amplifiers. Okay, so there's all sorts of ways that you can create an amplifier. You can you can create an amplifier that's a, a simple BJT circuit. Something like this. Some biasing resistors. And a capacitor for coupling the input. We've got an input there and a capacitor for coupling the output. We'll talk more about what, what the exact purpose of those capacitors are later, but this would be a simple single stage BJT amplifier. And we could replace this BJT, this, this particular transistor there, with a, with a FET of some kind and also design an amplifier that way. We could um, design some, an amplifier using an, an op amp circuit, which is an integrated circuit. We could also design multi-stage BJT and FET amplifiers using discrete, discrete components. We could um, other, use other ICs to design amplifiers. We could even use a vacuum tube to design amplifiers. There's even different classes of amplifiers: class A, class AB, class B, class D, and and you know lots lots of different letters. Those are the main ones that we'll focus on in this course anyway. Um, but for all of these different types of amplifiers there are three characteristic features we can use to model the behavior of the amplifier um, as sort of a, a, a next order modeling of the amplifier instead of just using the voltage gain. So these, these three things that we're going to use, these three characteristics of the amplifier, of any amplifier, so any of these amplifiers are going to have some kind of, some amount of voltage gain which we've seen before with the capital A and the subscript V, so this is our voltage gain. They will also have some amount of Z in, which is input impedance. And the third thing is they'll have some amount of Z out or output impedance. And both of these last two things, the input impedance and the output impedance, are going to have a potentially have a pretty significant effect on the way the amplifier behaves in, compared to if you just consider the voltage gain. So let's clear the screen here and redraw general amplifier schematic representation. So this can this this can be representative of any type of amplifier. Whether it's a BJT or a FET amplifier or an op amp or or whatever. Okay, so here's a big triangle. We've got our input and we've got our output. And now over here on the input is our input impedance, our Z in. I'm going to draw this connected to ground. So what will happen is if you are, you're going to apply some amount of input voltage here across the Z in. And then we will have some amount of gain in the amplifier. I'm going to draw this as a dependent voltage source. So as a, a diamond here. So it's a dependent voltage source and that dependent voltage source is going to be outputting a voltage that's equal to the gain of the amplifier times the input voltage applied. And then the third thing in the amplifier, the third characteristic is the output impedance. We've got voltage gain, our, our three characteristics that we're worried about our voltage gain, our input impedance, and our output impedance. 
and I'll just give you a little bit of more detail about what each one of these characteristics are. Well, actually, we went we went over what the voltage gain was in, uh, in a previous tutorial, so I'll leave it to you to watch the the general amplifiers part one to, to look more into the voltage gain. But let's look at the input impedance, and essentially, the input impedance is the resistance or the impedance that the input signal sees when it's applied to the amplifier. And more specifically, if we wanted to come up with a proper definition of it, we're going to apply some voltage at the input, which is going to give us some amount of current going into the input. So the input impedance Z in is going to be equal to the voltage applied divided by the current that's flowing into the amplifier. Just from Ohm's law, there's some resistance there. You apply voltage, you're going to get a certain amount of current. Uh, looking at this equation here, we've got Zn is equal to Vn over In. So Zn is, is is what's controlling how much current is actually flowing into the input, and this is actually going to have a pretty significant effect on the overall circuit. And and here I'll, I'm going to clear the screen here and and just focus on just what's happening at the input. So uh, here's our amplifier over here, just the input part of it. And we've got our Z in, and then applied at the input across that Z in is going to be some amount of V in. But of course, that V in is not just magically appearing there, it's got to come from somewhere. So over here, we've got some kind of voltage source. Uh, could be an audio source, could just be a simple function generator. And just like amplifiers, these voltage sources are also going to have some amount of output impedance, which we're going to call our source in this. So if we're outputting, say, 10 volts from this voltage source, that 10 volts is going to create a current that's going to be flowing let's say in this direction here, so a 10 volt peak will have the current flowing in this direction here, and because of this R source we're going to have some amount of voltage drop there, and because of Z in we're going to have some amount of voltage drop here as well, so what we, what we really get is we have a voltage divider circuit, so V in is not going to be equal to V source, it's going to be some fraction of V source, and that fraction of V source is going to determ be determined by how much the input impedance of the amplifier is, and how much the output impedance of the of the source is. So if we if you redraw the circuit, so it's easier to see how the voltage divider works. Here's my V source. Here's my R source. And here's my Z in, and then across Z in here is my V in. So current is created, there's some voltage drop, drop across R source, and the rest of the voltage drop is across V in. So V in is going to be equal to V source times Z in over Z in plus R source. So it'll be some fraction of uh, V in will be some fraction of V source. So, um, for example, let's say V source is equal to um, what should we use? 10 volt peak. So it is an AC source, 10 volt peak. And we've got our source is 50 ohms. There's a 50 ohm output impedance of the of the source, and Z in is equal to 1000 ohms. So what's the Vn going to be? Well, Vn will be equal to 10, and then we look at the voltage divider. So some of the voltage is going to be dropped across here, the rest will be dropped across 1000 ohms. So it's 1000 ohm that we care about, so 1000 ohms over 50 plus 1000 ohms. And that works out to 9.52 volts peak. This is this is a peak voltage. All right. 
Now what would happen? Now so so that's actually that's actually pretty close. We've got a 10 volt source and we've got 9.52 volts as as the peak um, the the input input voltage. But now what would happen if it's, actually no let's leave that as 50. But what happens if we match both? So we're actually matching the output impedance of the of the voltage source and the input impedance of the amplifier. So we've got 10, 10 volt peak source and we're applying it across this, this voltage divider network and we're worried about, we, we care about this 50 ohm resistance here, 50 ohm impedance there. So in this voltage divider network we're actually going to end up with a V in that's equal to half of the V source because of the voltage divider network. So you can see that those this input impedance can have a pretty significant effect on the on what actually the V in voltage actually is compared to what your V source is. Now the bigger your input impedance is, the closer you're going to be to your V source. Right? Because if this if this input impedance was you know, approached infinite, then what we're doing is in this equation here we'll have 10 times infinite over infinite plus 50, well that's going to be of course equal to 10 volts.